a long time because I had a meltdown in there. That's what I'm saying. You must have, uh, wasn't a lot of commercials. It was you. It, you know, I, I was doing a commercial for our station in L.A. for a, a, um, a, a company called Periwinkles, a good sponsor of ours. I don't know what Periwinkles is. I don't either. But I know I've done commercials. I think I've done commercials. I don't even know. Is Periwinkles in L.A.? Was that an L.A. commercial I was recording? I'm not, you know, I listen to the show a lot in L.A. when I'm there, and I can't recall Periwinkles. I don't know what it is. Yeah. The copy was just bad. It's not a. It's a great. Pl Can someone tell me where Periwinkles is? Is that in? Is that in L.A.? I don't. You know, sometimes I read them. I don't even know where they are. After the after the show on Thursdays is my day to record commercials for the rest of the country, and I. I'm never in the mood. You know, I'm just really tired after the show. And I don't feel like sitting there and doing live commercials. <laughs> Putting on a happy face. Yeah. Can someone tell me? Can someone answer my question out there immediately? Does anybody hear you? We do. We're looking it up now. Thank you, brother. That's all I need to know. I just need to know you're, you're hearing me. So I, uh, I went back to a little meltdown. It, it, and Perry Winkles is a good fine uh, sponsor. It's whoever wrote the copy just wrote a really weird piece of copy, and you're reading it, and I started sounding like a douchebag, I thought, and I had a meltdown. <laughs> I had a, it was like, uh, you know, Orson Welles or William Shatter, Casey Kasem. <laughs> You're right in there. I was right in there. <laughs> All right, I can't get the answer. I found out that it's in Burlington, Vermont. Ah, okay. That's what I needed to know. It was from Burlington, Vermont. And and they're nice people, and, and Periwinkle's a great place. It's just they asked that. In the copy, I had to say, go into Periwinkles and ask them to please put a store in Manhattan. And I just thought, well, who, <laughs> we gotta, who's going to go do that? I'm asking people to do something that they're not going to do. I mean, so I had, you want to hear my breakdown? Yeah, sure. That's what I'm waiting for. I'm Absolutely. laughing thinking about it. I, I don't want anyone to think I don't like Periwinkles. I like Periwinkles. I, it was the copy was odd. Oh, oh you say a lot yeah. about Periwinkles. Well, I don't even know. I didn't even know what Periwinkles was. <laughs> you know. I'm going to hang myself. No, wait, wait, wait. I gotta, it's not re -cued. God damn it. I was in the middle of listening to it. That's why. <laughs> See? Just play Casey Kasem and then we'll build into me. That's the letter U and the numeral two. That's the letter U and the numeral. That's the letter U and the numeral two. Is that the way I say that? I don't know how to say it. <laughs> Is that the way I say That's that? That's the letter U and the numeral two. The four-man band features Adam Clayton on bass, Larry Mullen on drums, Dave Evans, nickname The Edge on... This is bullshit. Nobody cares. These guys are from England, and who gives a shit? Oh, it's you too. Nobody now, gives a crap. we're up to our long-distance dedication. <laughs> and this one is about kids and pets and a situation that we can all understand, whether we have kids or pets or neither. It's from a man in Cincinnati, Ohio, and here's what he writes. Dear Casey, this may seem to be a strange dedication request, but I'm quite sincere, and it'll mean a lot if you play it. Recently, there was a death in our family. He was a little dog named Snuggles, but he was most certainly a part of... Let's go start again. I'm coming out of the record. Play the record, okay? Please. <laughs> Get done. <laughs> See, when you come out of those up-tempo damn numbers, man, it's impossible to make those transitions, and then you got to go into somebody dying. You know, they do this to me all the time. I don't know what the hell they do it for, but damn it, if we can't come out of a slow record, I don't understand it. Is Don on the phone? Okay, I want a damn concerted effort to come out of a record that isn't a f***ing up-tempo record every time I do a damn death dedication. Now, make it, and I also want to know what happened to the pictures I was supposed to see this week. It's the last damn time I want somebody use a brain to not come out of a damn record that is, uh, that, that's up-tempo, and I got to talk about a f***ing dog dying. <laughs> Hi, this is Casey Kasem. American Top 40 has moved to a new time. I hope you'll join me this Saturday morning and every Saturday morning at 2. Two. Boy, is it ponderous, man. Ponderous. And ponderous. She's on the rag. You know, it seems important at the time when you do. You know, it. it 
They realize it doesn't even matter. Please, I'm listening to a man who works once a week in this one. Yeah. That's, those tapes are the most likable I've ever heard, Casey Kasem. Well, in my uh, defense, I had just done five hours on the radio, and I was right. a little woozy. But Casey worked once a week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so stop in and ask Perry to open a store in Manhattan, New York City. What? What? Uh, stop in and ask Perry to open a store in Manhattan. Who gives a f***? You <laughs> God damn this f head. Holy mackerel, you f Perry bastard. I don't even believe this commercial. I'm not saying this. Holy shit. Go into Periwinkles and say I need a store in Manhattan. Like some fucking moron's going to go do that. Yeah, that's what I'll do. <laughs> Holy uh, f Holy f Who the f writes this sh got to be insane. You know what? They must think mentally ill people listen to the show. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it and ask Perry to open a store in Manhattan. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Somebody cares. What <laughs> <laughs> a dumb comment. I'm sitting there laughing. Anne Marie sits here quietly, like a. She doesn't even look at you. Huh? Like a mouse. She's like, "Oh my God, what's going on?" I'm just gonna pretend it's not happening. And Tim was the engineer. He just sat there, just waited. I'm sitting there laughing. I'm going, "They think I'm mental. They think I'm mental." <laughs> <laughs> but I'm having a breakdown. You know what? The thing is, you're making an excellent point. Who's gonna go in and ask? Them? I mean, I mean you're all, you're, all your points are valid. I mean, I love our sponsors, and I'll ask them. I'll ask the audience to do anything on their behalf, but no one. Are gonna go in and say, hey, now, Perry. You can't ask him to go in and ask for a New York store. <laughs> Please, we're begging you. There's not enough stores in Manhattan. Can you open one in New York? Listen, Perry, I was we thinking. We need you in New York. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not reading this. There's an abandoned warehouse on 31st and 8th. You'd be uh, perfect for it. I went berserk. We're dying for business. <laughs> By the way, Perry is not a bitch or a. Who is bastard. Perry? Is I don't know. Perry Winkle? I don't know. <laughs> But uh, I'm, a, I'm a fan of Periwinkle, and I love it. I, 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 I only uh, think the copy was a little off. That's you all. hope they open a store in Manhattan. I actually do. I'd like to see the store. Go in and ask Perry for a store. Now it makes sense in, that, in light of that. <laughs> oh, man. I'm going to hang myself. So stop in and ask Perry to open a store in Manhattan, New York City. What? Uh, stop in and ask Perry to open a store in Manhattan. Who gives a f***? You c***. God damn this f*** head. Holy mackerel, you f*** Perry bastard. <laughs> <laughs> Go in and ask Perry for a store in Aruba, too. Yeah, ask us for a store in your state. <laughs> Why should Vermont be the only one? I felt bad for Perry because he's paying a lot of money for a commercial and he should have he should be represented properly. So that's that was my anger. <laughs> you understand, Robin? Of course. No. All for the sponsors. Listen, I'm very grateful to our sponsors. And, I, and our sponsors are the lifeblood of this show. And I want everyone to go to Perry Winkles and enjoy them in Vermont and support them and, and, I, and, and bring one to New York. For and God's hopefully sake. there'll be one here yeah. soon. I just had a breakdown. I was in a weak moment. <laughs> I wasn't thinking. Okay, uh, Zach, you're on the air. Uh, welcome to the show. Hey, Howard, what's yeah. up, man? Hey, brother. Listen, I was wondering if you could do me a favor. That Howard Dean clip that you have with the Rocky theme music, if you could play that again this morning, you know, while well, you're not busy, you don't got any guests, I would, I'd be in love, man. Really? Okay, well, let's make that happen. Take me two seconds. Oh, thanks, man. Are we ready? Yes. Uh, uh, well, yeah, I'm ready. That, All right. That sounds good. Let me just, I just got to put it on speakerphone so my friend can hear it, too. All right. Thanks, Howard. Washington and Michigan! And then we're going to Washington, D.C. to take back the White House! We will not give up! We will not give up in New Hampshire! We will not give up in South Carolina! We will not give up in Arizona! Or New Mexico! Oklahoma! North Dakota! Delaware! Pennsylvania, Ohio, Michigan, we will not quit now or ever. We want our country back for ordinary Americans. And we're going to 
win in Massachusetts, <laughs> in North Carolina, and Missouri, and Arkansas, and Connecticut, and New York, and Ohio. Which is great, by the way. Yeah. First time I ever That's used what one. I awesome. Hear. I've never used one. It is one. awesome. You got to get the one I got. It's like sixty bucks. Well, yeah. I mean, they're all. You know, they're always. Saying, I have actually given them as Christmas presents, but I've never bought one for myself. Got to get one. I made turkey burgers. Uh huh. I just got turkey meat. And it's uh, talk about low calorie. I took I took uh, mustard. There's even a little recipe book. I took Dijon mustard. Is this in the George Foreman recipe? Book? Yeah, I took I took Dijon mustard, about six tablespoons and two pounds of chopped meat, and uh, put it all through with some. I chopped up onions and peppers, oh, made little yeah. patties. <laughs> you put it in the George Foreman grill. You close the thing. Right. Six six to eight minutes later. They're done. Perfectly grilled. And they're perfect. Grease Greaseless. Greaseless, but, well, that's but the tasty. Whole thing. And I don't understand why George Foreman looks the way he does if he's using his grill. Because no. George Foreman <laughs> lucked out, man. He really did. Oh, yes, he did. You know what it is? It, to me, it's like he's the male guy that's got the thigh master. It's yeah. Like there's a million products. Except one he's got a good product. Yeah. George Foreman grill. Well, God you bless don't him. realize that, you know, he uh, got that deal, and then he had that Midas deal, I think it was. That's the transmission place he talks about, right? Right. Meineke. Meineke. Okay. Muffler. Meineke mufflers. And then he won the, the title again. Nobody ever expected that to happen. And it went crazy. Everything went crazy with his name on it. And then he sold that company for I don't know how much money. <laughs> that dude... If he, he went back into boxing as an old man, yeah. and people loved him for it, yeah. and then that's how he got the endorsement of the George Foreman Grill, forget about it. And the whole thing got sold, and he made a couple of hundred million dollars. Anyway, it was beautiful. I opened up a bottle of wine from Dr. Sal Calabro. Hey, no. Yeah, that's good stuff. Whoa. What is that stuff? I don't know. Do that, how much and you... Where is it from? It always has like a strange name. It comes in a wood box. I looked it up. It's from uh, It's a French... Oh, I got a case of it. Oh. I think it's a French Bordeaux. I don't know. I got a case of it. Right. He always sends a case to everybody. It comes in a wood crate. Yeah. I figured it's good wine. It tasted great. Opened up a bottle of wine. Had, uh... Well, I don't know if you drink wine at the Super Bowl. Yeah. We <laughs> drink a beer. Sorry. I was drinking wine with my George That's Foreman... That's not in the rule book. George Foreman turkey burger. <laughs> And I made uh, two baked potatoes in the microwave, the way I like them. Well, actually, that is not a Super Bowl meal either. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Chicken wings and quesadillas. Yeah, well, I ain't eating that. You know that pizza, I read yesterday, pizza uh, sales go up 20% on Super Bowl Sunday. Yeah, good. It's amazing. It's, it, Super Bowl sells televisions, food, and something else. I forget what the third thing is, but televisions even get sold on Super Bowl Sunday. Hey, Andrew, you're on the air. Hey, Howard, big fan. Mm -mm. Mm. Hey, uh... Uh, George Foreman got a hundred million dollars for that buyout. Yeah. But he doesn't make any money from it now, but you know, a hundred million, hundred million. You got a hundred million on the buyout for the grills? Yeah. Yeah. Whoa. Who you know, knew I, that I, I have one of the grills, and, and there's nothing on my uh, my instruction booklet that says uh, anything about having sex with Beth. Right. I, I, I went off the book. I know. Uh, okay. Nobody says that uh, on Super Bowl Sunday. I know. I was shocked. <laughs> hey, but it happened. And it was important. Hey, w weren't you thinking last night that like? They start the game at 6.30, right? Everybody's partying. It's a big deal. Why can't they do the game on Saturday? So you can really, you can really party. party. You can really party. I, I mean, know. nothing's going on. I know. It's so dumb. I think they've figured out that on Sunday is the day that most people are available to watch. Like, people, like guys get commitments yeah, from their wives. Yeah, but it turns into a national holiday. become an appointment television. Right. Yeah, but they, I'm telling you, Sunday night, your wife ain't making plans to go anywhere. Saturday night, she is. No, yeah, I just, true. You, I have a little trouble getting that night off. It wouldn't be bad to start the game a little earlier, but what do I know? When we did our Super Bowl parties, the game used to start at 1. Mm -hmm. Then they moved it to 3. Right. Then they moved it to 5. And now it starts at 6:30. Now 30. it's prime time. It's crazy. Yeah. All right. Anyway, <clears throat> so listen to my listen to my Super Bowl experience. So, I I was watching the game and I I couldn't keep my eyes open. I couldn't keep my eyes open. But I hit the TiVo, and I said, you know, I, I'm watching the game. I had the wine. I had the sex. I had the the turkey burgers. The whole thing. Halftime happens. I go. Now I got a problem. I want to watch both. Right. We got a problem. So I had the TiVo on. 
I'm recording the regular Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. I switch over to the lingerie bowl. Twenty friggin' bucks. I switch over to lingerie bowl. How was it? Well, first of all, didn't you, didn't they say that at halftime the game would start and it would be a 23 minute right, game? Right. It was supposed to be exactly halftime. I tune into the lingerie bowl, and they're in their halftime of the game. Can you imagine? Oh, they started. They, they started, started before halftime. Oh yeah, they had a whole first half. Oh, my or goodness. something. I don't know what was going on, but I, all I know is there was a lot of standing around. And uh, Amy Weber, who was on Son of the Beach, she was doing the commentary. And everyone had to like show their boobs, kind of like like a low-cut top. And she, the whole time she's just going, I'm really impressed with the girls. These girls are really impressive. I have to say, I'm very impressed. I'm like <laughs> Amy had, Weber. had uh, 10 million ways of saying I'm impressed. Uh, you wanted to kill yourself. It was the cheesiest thing you ever saw, oh, first God. of all. I mean, it was worse than... First of all, the lingerie sucked. Really? Yeah, because the girls were wearing like a panty, like a giant panty lingerie. Like, I know how good a body Angie has, and she didn't even look great in her lingerie because it was like weird lingerie. Oh. And I don't know what Angie's on, but she was way over the top. I mean, like, way into it, like, yelling and screaming. And You don't think she's on something. No, I don't think she's on something, but... She's all hyped up on, like, uh, adrenaline. It, like, it was a little weird. Too seriously? Yeah. It was a little weird. I'm, like, watching this thing going. She's really into it. She's like, I'm going to win. I'm going to win this game. And these guys are cheating down. And I was like, whoa. Oh, boy. She was more enthusiastic than the guys who were playing the Super Bowl. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And, uh, but Angie was right. Nikki Zeering, as far as I can see, hardly played. Really? Uh, but they saw two seconds of a game. And, of course... Uh, they didn't come back while Super Bowl was on? See, you, I looked well, at You had an all-day pass, and they kept repeating it after that. So you could have watched the halftime show and then oh, watched right. it later. Oh, great. Yeah, good. Well, anyway, yeah, I caught true. the end of the lingerie bowl, and that was the uh, final score was Nikki's team won 6 nothing. You're kidding. No, but it was a joke because Nikki didn't play. I mean, so they brought in the ringer, and the ringer yeah. actually ran the football team. Yeah. And Angie really ran her team? Yeah. Could she pass, or did she have I saw three play. Angie was in for two seconds, and then the game was over. Uh, I mean, it, well, was, it, was, a total, it was totally a rip. Oh. Uh. They, did, they said they were going to play the whole game during uh, during regular halftime of the Super Bowl. And w were the outfits hot? No, he said the panties were bad. Meanwhile, who knew over in the real halftime, Janet Jackson was going to reveal her breasts? Right. Well, that was the thing. There was more breasts in the actual halftime show. There were no breasts in None. the lingerie bowl. Right. But the real halftime show did have a breast in it. Now, do you know a guy streaked? Yes. And during a commercial break? That. Yeah, but I got I got a picture of the dude streaking. Did you? Because I was like, well, let yeah. us see him. Now, yeah. what company was he streaking for? He wasn't streaking for his. Oh, he just, he just, just a guy. He didn't have stuff. What's the past tense? He struck. He didn't. He didn't have stuff written on his back. I thought it was a writing. I don't know. I couldn't tell. I didn't get a good glimpse of him at all. Where did you see the streak? Same email. I saw the yeah, email. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah, we got the guy. Had a terrific ass. How did he, uh, yeah? How did he get on the field? They were clearing know. the Super Bowls. I mean, the halftime stuff away. Really? Took to the yeah, field. Yeah, wasn't yeah. this going to be like the most, you know, the, the secure. secure ever, mm. seven mile, no fly zone? Yeah. And a guy gets on the field. Oh, well, we know insane. he didn't come out of a plane. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know. It was like, the whole thing was weird. So but I watched. You really did try to get the lingerie ball in at yeah. halftime. I got it in. I watched it. And, well, you uh, say, I'm about saying there weren't, wasn't much play. Right. Well, anyway, so I was there long enough to know I dropped 200 on the lingerie ball because I had Angie's theme. Oh, that's right. Yeah, so I, already, I, I, I owe already 200 bucks. But, you know, they should pay you because they really did sucker us. They said Nikki yeah. was going to play. Yeah. I, you know, I told you it was going to suck. You could tell it was going to suck a mile away. Yeah, well, I tuned in to see if I had my 200 bucks. So, like, and then Beth was laughing because she goes, you lost 220 bucks. <laughs> she goes, not 200. <laughs> I go, yeah, I guess uh It was all a loss. <laughs> and then, I wonder how many people tuned in. I don't know. It didn't make Angie look good, because even Beth said, if I have any jealousy toward Angie because of the fact that you dated her, she goes, no, it's, not, it's this, over. It's over now. I don't, you know, I just... Uh, it wasn't a good thing. Yeah, she goes, you should, you should be embarrassed. Oh. <laughs> I go, oh. oh. She was laughing. It was pretty cheesy. I got to admit. And It uh, sounds it. Did you make it to the end of the game? 
Well, wait a second. So now here's the horror, the whole stupid story. So I tuned back, and then I said, well, I'll just fast forward through the uh, halftime, see if anything cool's happening. So first thing you see is uh, who the hell came out first? He did he in... No. Well, first, Jessica Simpson was screaming. Right. Oh, that was... no, I didn't see that. Yeah. Oh, she, Howard, she, she got on mic, and it was, like, way too loud. She couldn't hear us, so and she's like... <laughs> oh, it's just somebody should just ship her out of the country. Yeah. Give her to, give, put her into the white slave trade. And how silly that, you know, she's supposed to be a singer, and all they'll let her do is scream into the microphone <laughs> that, you know, it's time to party. So then Janet Jackson comes out of the floor, I think, was the first thing. Yeah, right. It was Janet Jackson. And then I, I was telling Beth, because she's the only person I had there to broadcast, though. <laughs> I said, uh, I said, man, she's she's got an ass. Because when I, when I received the Billboard Up and Coming Actor Award right. after Private Parts was released, I was there with Janet Jackson. She had the biggest ass I've ever seen. You know, they talk about J-Lo's ass. J-Lo has no ass. Not, not compared to Janet. No. Mm -hmm. Janet has, like, literally, like, have you ever seen a person whose lower body is just like a shelf, the ass, is, it's like, like you're like, oh, my God, they're deformed. It was like a bench sits behind her even when she gets up. Yeah. So they dressed her right. She has to wear a blanket over her ass. Well, I said it was like the Wizard of Oz. Don't look behind the curtain because right. there's a big ass. They should have pulled that curtain up. <laughs> She's built like a squash. So they had the ass covered with a towel. And, and she... they had strips. Fringe, a bustle. They had everything they could think of to yeah. put over the ass. Everything goes over that ass. Imagine the dis see. I would have loved to see a reality show trying to dress that ass <laughs> for the Super Bowl. The designer of the ass. Yeah. Ass curtain. And between you and me, I thought kind of the the halftime show was sort of has been show. Right. Um, I love Aerosmith. They're my favorite band. I think. But um, how many years are you going to pull out Aerosmith? Well, that was earlier. That yeah. was early. They opened. Yeah, they early. weren't. They weren't in the halftime show. But I'll tell you what. They were the only good band. I love them. Uh, first of all, they made they made. Uh, Everyone do their old songs. Right. I was like, Kid Rock singing something 100 years old. Yeah, Kid Rock singing a whole old song. You got Nelly, Nelly singing. Nelly doing It's Hot in Here. Which, you know, hey, dude, how many times are you going to go to that bowl? P. Diddy was doing uh, something from a, you know, P. a couple Diddy's albums a, ago. P. Diddy's a clothing designer. And Janet Jackson, she's doing something from 1988. Yeah. Right. That was like the Rhythm Nation. The Rhythm Nation. Album. Rhythm Nation. The only guy they had there was Justin Timberlake, who I'm not, you know, I mean, I don't care to really see him. But at um, least he's relevant. At least he's relevant. He's yeah. got a hit going. So, uh, anyway, so... They were I'm, lucky to have him. Yeah, so I'm going through the whole halftime thing, and I fast-forward through it. I, I didn't even see the boob shot. I, had, I got it off the Internet. I mean, I missed that. Well, yeah, I'm sitting there, you know, watching, and I'm like, did I see Janet Jackson's breast? <laughs> I'll tell you what. <laughs> when I was first reading about it, because I didn't realize she showed her breast, I thought it was an accident, but it wasn't. No, it was planned. Yeah. It wasn't a pop out. That's what I was like. That was my confusion. I'm like, was that an accident? No, that looked planned. Yeah, well, evidently she'd been going around saying something big is going to happen during the Janet Jackson. It's going to be a surprise. Like, you know how Madonna right. kissed uh, Britney right. Spears? It's going to be something big happening. At the party I was at, everyone thought the surprise was that Michael was coming out. That you could oh. bring Michael out. I'm they would have, they would have, you know, stoned him. Until she exposed that breast, everybody thought it was Michael. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she does look like him. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. and she moves like him. Yeah. And does she have any new dance steps since that? No, no, she looked like she was doing Thriller. <laughs> right. She does that same thing over and over again, yeah. that robot thing. Yeah. The robot thing and the head thing. Yeah. Who cares? Yeah. <laughs> I thought the brush was a football when I saw it. It wasn't even that great. Of and, you know, like everyone now is freaking out. CBS is apologizing. They didn't know and this and that and MTV. And, um, but you know what? Like, like, like in Europe, women walk around topless all the Who cares? Yeah, nudity is on the television all the time. Yeah. Well, if the FCC is true to form, there should be a huge fine. Yeah, they should uh, shut it down. That's right. Not have any more Super Bowl. Turn it off. Turn off the Super Bowl. They should find the Super Bowl. <laughs> but why would you find? Why would they find CBS? Why don't they find like Janet Jackson? Well, they can't do that because she doesn't own anything. She, she... Yeah, they didn't. She didn't broadcast. That's did right. She just perform. Let's see if the FCC is true to form. They're busy finding radio guys. Why don't they? Why don't they find some TV shows now? Now they got a perfect opportunity. We're That's got... what they were saying. That it's a, well, the Congress was anyway yeah. saying they were. It was absolutely a sin that they weren't finding. Television now they have an opportunity. We, and, and by God, I know when I saw the breast, I had to go out and rape fifteen people. <laughs> I mean, it, it drove me right out the door. I mean, God forbid a child sees a breast. <laughs> Meanwhile, the breast was covered in some metallic-looking thing. Wasn't it pierced or something? That's what I thought that was. I don't know. It had like an ornament on it. It was an ornament on there. Okay. Like little Kim yeah, does. It was like a Christmas tree. <laughs> it was a Christmas, a Christmas boob. <laughs> <laughs> 
So I missed that because I fast forwarded through it. And then when the score was, I don't know, I was somewhere in the third quarter, game was getting good, I fell asleep. Uh, but I, I had my TiVo on record, no problem. I said, uh, when oh, I wake up, I know what happened. Long. I woke up at 4 in the morning. I said, this is great. I don't know what happened. I'm, I'm going to fast forward through the horrible commercials because there wasn't even any good commercials. No good commercials. And I'm going to fast forward. I start watching the game. I couldn't believe the 85-yard pass. I go, yeah. whoa, this is a great game. Some amazing things happened. Yeah. And then uh, my TiVo ran out. Right. right. TiVo it's, sucks. Because it's, it's, Survivor started at 10. Yeah. It sucks. It, it, it cut me off. And I know I should have said tape an hour over, but I was asleep. Or just hit the button on Survivor. That's what I right. did. I hit the button on Survivor, and right. I hit the button on what were the news right. after that. How'd you do that? Fourth thing after. You just go in and hit the button and record, you know, tell it to record everything after the game. Mm. See, I had Survivor, so I just told it to record for an hour and a half after Survivor. Wow. But I, I just knew. had a feeling, because I wanted to see Survivor, too, so I just did... Two or three things even after. Now, you didn't watch that last night, did you, Survivor? Yeah, I did. What time what did you pay? up? I was, I was so keyed up after the game. I just said, eh, hey, might as well sit here and watch Survivor, too. What, uh, so how much sleep did you get? An hour? No, probably, uh, it was after midnight. <laughs> something like that. <laughs> Quivers of life. Having a life. Well. Uh. Look at you. <laughs> I fell asleep. So I did not see the end of the game. I had to read oh, about the, the goddamn end. The end of that game was amazing. Uh, anybody got it on tape? Yeah, I have it on you tape. You do? Because yeah. uh, if I could have it, I, I, I just I want to see it. You know, you know what the turning point of the game was at the end, mm. which, which they're talking about a little bit. So Carolina ties the score. Right. There's a minute eight left. Yeah. And by the way, see, here's where I left off. Carolina threw that pass, so the score was... What was the score when they threw that pass? Twenty. They went for the two-point two conversion and didn't get it, so it was right. 22-21. Right. Yeah. 22-21. New England comes back, scores a touchdown, but then they get a two-point conversion? Right. Yeah. Oh, so they so tied they it up. No, 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 it's 29-22. Okay. And then, okay. And then New, Carolina. Carolina gets another touchdown with a regular one-point conversion. 29-29. 29-29. So there's a minute eight left in the game. Go Carolina's ahead. just scored. So... Carolina kicks off, and for some reason, their kicker, I don't know what happened, he kicked the ball out of bounds. So not only do they spot it where it goes out of bounds, it's a 10-yard penalty. So New England now starts with the ball on the 40-yard line oh. with one of the best field goal kickers and a minute eight left and Tom Brady. It's too much. Yeah, yeah. and he moved it right down the field. It, yeah, right down, no problem. Big blunder. Yeah, why did he kick it? Why did he? The guy was shaking his head afterwards, like I don't know. Yeah, I don't think he meant to. Do he didn't. That. Mean, yeah. I think he was trying to put it in the corner. Maybe he had money on New England. No, I, I think he was trying to put it in the corner so that New England would have a tough time running it back, and it right. just got away from him. Wow. But that was the difference. Yeah, I mean, that was a mistake. When they started at the forty-yard line, you knew it was over. God damn! I wanted to see that. I was yelling this morning, screaming <laughs> at that damn TiVo, <laughs> and Beth kept going. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. You know, she felt bad for me. Yeah. I said, don't say that. <laughs> I'm a loser. <laughs> Dropped 200 on the lingerie ball. I'm so glad I didn't bet Super Bowl, though. I, who, who, who yeah, it was, it, you know, it would have been worthless yeah. to try to bet the Super Bowl the way it turned out. Nobody could have called that game. What the, the two best teams did wind up in the Super Bowl, and it turned into a good Super Bowl after the first half. Here's my boyfriend, Ralph. Think about football, Rob, and you would have bet the over. Well, that's true. Hold it. Hold it. Thank you. I want to say something. We kept talking about the over. Artie wanted to bet the over. Every jerk that I know was emailing, and so calling, gotta be the under. going, these are the two. Artie doesn't know anything about football. These are the two best defensive teams in the NFL. What a jerk. He's going to lose his money. Meanwhile, there you go. There's the over. You know, None of that. Wait a minute. He also wanted that field goal bet. Uh, what? How many field goals did they kick? Uh, three. There were three kicked. And and you had to have three and a half. That was the over. And under. I don't know if Carolina kicked Car any. Carolina, I thought, kicked one because it was 14. At, no, wait a minute. Well, Carolina kicked one. Guys. That's right. So there were four yeah, at least. Yeah, yeah. There were four field goals? There were four. That's right. Because Carolina so then, that, that, That's no, a good no, bet. No, no, no. There weren't four because they didn't. Four they attempted. missed two. No. Four so you had to have completed right. three and a half. Right. So, so he we, didn't win that bet. He lost that bet. He lost that bet. Like, do you remember what Artie bet on the coin toss? It was an over-under. On because you guys three. you guys are talking about stuff and everyone's talking over each other so nobody knows what we're talking about. There's an over under on field goals. If you complete more than three, they call it three and a half. So yeah. there's no ties. That was the over. And I don't think that, that was didn't done. happen. No. And I think Artie bet the over. 
And, yeah, because that was everybody was screaming at him. You can't bet the over on field goals and also bet the over on the final score. There was another bet. He's going to call him. There was another bet that Artie was all over. Two field goals were made. That's right. it. Yeah. Two. There's another bet that Artie was all over, which was New England will never give up the lead. Uh, and I wonder if he jumped they, on that one. They didn't. They did give up yes. the lead. I don't know what he bet. What did you want to say, Ralphie? Uh, did, did, you, uh, did you get to see that whole Janet Jackson thing? I saw the uh, pictures of it. Uh, it you have to see it in motion because, like, you know what? It was kind of sad because, you know, I was watching that TiVo, so I rewound it a few to few hundred times and took a good look. You know, her breast is kind of, like, floppy. Oh, really? Yeah. It, it's, it's not, not great. It, no, it's not great. It's not. You know, it looked kind of desperate, too, like, you know, like an old Madonna, you know, like that whole trick. Mm -hmm. Just, you know. No, that's what we just said. And then she said it wasn't an accident. She said it was an accident, but she had, like, a little tassel over it. Yeah, it was pre-planned. Yeah. yeah. There was no way that was No. Fine. I mean, she'd have slapped Justin Timberlake's face if it was an accident. <laughs> because he certainly ripped off something. She would have beat him up. But it looked it, it looked desperate, too, Howard. The way, like, did you see he was dry humping her from behind? Yeah. And it's a young guy who's relevant and she's not. And mm -hmm. it just was. It was sad. It said. You know, as soon as she came out and was doing it, I was like, you know, I remember when Diana Ross did this. It was after her career was over. Who knew Janet would be doing it, too? Yeah. Hey, uh, if Artie calls it, have him have, him have uh, Sam call it, too. Like, Sam was giving me this whole rap on, you know, that defensive rap, you know, Carolina and this and that, you know, and he's done research on it, and he's, like, highly recommending taking the, you know, taking the, uh, uh, taking, uh, the New England. And, uh, what? God knows how much he bet, because he was really all over it. What are you saying? Oh, he took New England with the, bet New England and gave away the points? Yeah. Oh, well. What does he care? He's got a billion dollars. Yeah. He didn't bet everything. Right. All right, bro. There you go. There's Ralph. Ralph's analysis. Mm. Yes, double A. Hey, how, how's it going? Hey. I want to know, how the hell can you say you had the worst Super Bowl experience when you had sex with the beautiful Beth O? Well, no. <laughs> that, that was the highlight of my life. That, that was the lousy Super Bowl. That was the best part. But then when I, I'm saying I didn't get to actually see the Super Bowl, I, I timed the sex perfectly because nothing was going on that first quarter. Yeah. But who cares about yeah. the Super Bowl? You're with beautiful I, I, That's, oh, that's irrelevant. He wants it all. Uh, I wanted double it all, A. Double A. He wants it all. <laughs> get out of here. I'm talking about the Super Bowl. And a good one for a change. Because, yeah. you know, the rap was usually when they have the two weeks between the playoffs and the Super Bowl that the Super Bowl usually sucks. It's usually a blowout. Yeah. And this time it didn't happen. Yeah, John. John. Hey, Howard. Hey. Hey, what's going on? You tell me. Well, I think that Janet seems surprised. I mean, I don't know. Um, what... Oh, please. She seems surprised. She stood there for a long time before she finally Please put her hand up. It. Are you out of your mind? I look surprised. I couldn't believe there was more boob on the on the regular Super Bowl than in the lingerie ball. And that bondage outfit certainly doesn't come apart that easily. Yeah, I think that was pretty well planned. I know there's a whole bunch of um, phone calls. I'm trying to get to them, but I realize i got to take a break. So let me take a break, and then Artie's going to call and tell us how he did. This guy says he saw Artie in Vegas. Wait a second. What, Josh? Josh? Hey, now. You saw Artie in Vegas? Yeah, Artie's a freaking wuss, man. What did he do? He got himself in trouble, like usual. What did he, he do? Getting, he, first of all, he's getting, he, he's getting drunk over some hard rock cast, right? He, he's knocking back. I can't hear this guy. Yeah. All right, Artie will be on the phone when we get back. We'll be back right after these words. Let's listen to the rantings of two show business pinheads, Rosie O'Donnell and Charles Grodin. I think there's a difference between what Hume Cronin said about your performance and what Howard Stern and Imus do. I think theirs is hateful, mean-spirited, sort of ignorance fueled by arrogance, and together that becomes lethal. As opposed to his sort of looking at your performance and saying, you know, that young kid could use a little help in this area, is very different than what they do. You know, this, this idea that somebody called up this explosion yeah, in Oklahoma I mean, it's, City and said, you know, it's Howard Stern, something about to promote a book. It just shows you what, what it's getting to. And I agree that there's a level of pact and decorum that's not about being politically correct. It's about being human, that they cross on a daily basis. So I'm with you. I will never do their show just because I don't want to be a party to it. Spiritually, it's damaging. Another episode of the Fatso and Baldy Show. The Alex Stern Show. 95 X. <laughs> Hey now. 
You know, Hank, I was just uh, wondering why you say that pay now thing. What do you mean? Well, it's just something you used on the show, and now you start using it in your personal life, and, and, and it's an affectation of some sort, isn't it? Did you ever say, hey, now, as a, as a kid? No, I don't. I probably didn't. Uh -huh. um, but uh, I, uh, I said, uh, hey. Yeah. And I said, uh, now. I mean, I said sure. different times, I but uh, I know I never put them together till later in life. Uh -huh. So, in that sense, it's, it's, uh, it's part of my personality. Hey, now. Hey, now. Hey now. Hey now. Hey now. Hey now. Come hey now. on. Hey now. Hey now. Hey now. Love that. Hey now. Hey now. Hey now. All right, I got Artie hey on the phone. Artie. <laughs> Artie isn't with us today because Artie played a gig in Vegas, and then Monday morning went to was supposed to be in L.A. because he has a full day of meetings about that movie they want him for. Right, yeah, he said he had some business to take care of in L.A. So Gary called his hotel in L.A. They they never even heard of Artie. They don't know where. They they said he never checked in, so we we tracked him down in Vegas. He hasn't been to sleep yet. He goes, it, this was the greatest weekend of my life. I couldn't go to sleep, so he's on his way now to L.A. Oh, my yeah. goodness. So a drunk and tired sleep. Artie is going to be in meetings all day? Hey, Artie. What's up, guys? Uh oh. <laughs> Listen to the guy who's going to be a meeting. I love that he's going from me. You know, I said, I only wish I could be as loose <laughs> as Artie. I have the inner voice of Ray and Ben Stern telling me I need to get rest. Yeah. You don't care. You haven't been to sleep yet. Howard, first of all, I just had the greatest weekend of my life. <laughs> all right, go ahead. First of all, did you bet the over? I bet the over. Five G's? I bet, I bet four grand on the over. Now, nice. how much? Was that a. Straight up bet, or, or what's the odds on that? No, it, when you bet the over, you just, you know, you win what you bet. Right, okay. four grand. So I, I won four grand on that. The coin toss, I was I watched the game with Sam Simon. Right. The coin toss, Sam said, I'll, I'll take the action from you. Okay. So I put $500 up with Sam on the table as the coin toss happened. I took the Panthers. I won. Nice. Yeah, so nice that's how the game started. I took five hundred dollars off Sam. By the way, you won two hundred off me in the lingerie bowl. Uh, you know what, Howard? I I just found that out right now. Yeah. I didn't I didn't know about the lingerie bowl. I completely forgot they were playing it. I and watched even it. Even without that, he had a great weekend. And yeah. did anybody bet that um, whether Janet Jackson's boob would pop out? <laughs> what were the odds on that? Yeah, they didn't have odds on Janet Jackson's boobs and face. All right, so right away you're up five hundred. I'm up five hundred. Yeah. Then what happened? So uh, so then I went down. I went down on the sports. Well, first of all, I saw Bowie Friday night. How was that? Un Howard, unbelievable. And did he do the good songs or that new crap? Howard, he did all his great stuff. Me and uh, me, and, you know, Richie was out here, and uh, me and Richie, why you, you, you talked to Richie about it? It was unbelievable. He did every, he did all the young dudes. He did uh, heroes. Wow. That's what Girl. I heard that he was doing all the good stuff. Oh, um, he did Rebel Rebel. He did Suffragette City. Oh, uh, uh, god damn! I never get to go to the good stuff. Right, and Howard, it was in it was in a a, a place a theater with twelve hundred seats. Oh, he played the same room I played. Wow. wow. Shows you how show business is turned upside down. Exactly. No Artie kidding. Artie and Bowie in the same place? Right. Wow. So Friday Damn. night for Bowie. <laughs> did he do Suffragette City? Yeah, he just he did He did that. Suffragette City, yeah. Did he do, hold on to yourself. <laughs> Whatever the hell that is. What is that? Did he do, he didn't do Starman. There's a star he didn't do man waiting in the... Nah. Dude, that's a little obscure. No, he it's not. He just did like the hits. That's a hit. He did, um... What else did he do? He did, uh, I'm Afraid of America. Oh, I love that. I'm Afraid of America. And he had that kick-ass band with that black chick bass player? Yeah. Yeah, yep. nice. Oh, it, 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 he was amazing. Bowie was amazing. So that was... Friday. I'll tell you who's amazing is that black chick bass player. I would bang her so hard that I literally... <laughs> I, I would bang her hair straight. <laughs> you know what's Her afro about would that? go... Her afro would go straight. You know what's funny about the black chick uh, bass player? He did Under Pressure, you know, the song he did with Queen. Yeah. He did that, and the chick did Freddie Mercury's part. That's appropriate. Wow. <laughs> no kidding. Yeah, and, and she sounded amazing. So how long were you there? So, like, you got right off the plane, freshened up. Um, I got up. right off the plane, just got ready, started gambling. I went down. Okay, so I played craps first. <laughs> what a weekend you had. I won money at craps. 
Really? What'd you win? I, 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 I'm up about two grand at the table. Wow. <laughs> Oh, I wish I was with you. See, you uh, know what? He could be making this up. It's because we couldn't see him. I can't believe it. Yeah, he's like Dominic. He leaves the table for a while, and then he makes money, you know? That's too much. I mean, I, 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 it's the greatest weekend of my life. All right, go ahead. So, so anyway, you, you get off the plane, you play craps, then you go to the Bowie concert. Right. And, like, you're eating and drinking the whole time, right? The whole time. All right, go ahead. At the Bowie concert, I had, you know, uh, the, the, the straw with the J and oh. <laughs> water. <laughs> J.D. and like water baby. through a straw. <laughs> yeah. did you, so how many bottles did you go through that night? Oh. Like two? Well, first of all, uh, the Hard Rock uh, Casino out here treated me beautifully because of you. Thank, uh, thank you. And uh, they get, the, I get into my room. There's like ten bottles of J.D. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. They're going to kill you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, did you have that bowling alley room? Huh? Did you have the bowling alley room or did no, uh, Bowie get that? No, bowling alley room. Some high roller. Oh, okay. All right, no big deal. I, you know, I, well, you believe me, when you get here, you find out, you know, even though you sell out a show, you're not, you're not Howard Stern. Well, not only that, you're not going to spend your time bowling anyway. I was going right. to say, what, the high roller comes there to bowl? Yeah, let's yeah. go to my room and bowl. <laughs> so so you, you go downstairs, you play the craps, you see Bowie, you even go to sleep Friday night? I, uh, I, I went to sleep at like 9 a.m. 9 a.m. Saturday. Saturday morning. Because after Bowie, you gambled, right? Right, yeah. I went down to the tables. I, I was playing craps, drunk off my ass, just throwing the dice, and I had money on the pass line, betting on myself, and uh, I, I I was kicking ass. I was winning. What do you mean? All you, all you bet was the pass line? That's all I bet was the pass line. I bet anything else. You're telling me. You just bet whether or not you'd get like a 7 or an 11. Yeah, I bet on me. So, like, how much money did you put down on a roll? Uh, two hundred. And you didn't take any numbers? No. Are you are you crazy, Howard? I was too drunk to He's take numbers. Drunk, I don't know what the Howard. hell I was doing. <laughs> he doesn't remember numbers. So, what <laughs> when another guy rolled, you just put money down on the pass line? Yeah, and then you know what? Richie had an amazing. Richie rolled for like fifteen minutes. Wow. And I was just betting the pass line the entire time. Every time I'm with that bum, he doesn't roll for a minute. <laughs> now he rolls for 15 minutes when I'm not there. Good for him. How come he's only up 2,000? How come? Well, because he, because he bet the pass line. <laughs> Guy rolls for 15 minutes. No, I should have been up way more, way more, way more. But I lost money back. I, I'm, I'm up two grand for the whole week. For the whole weekend. All right, wait a second. Hey, Shuley. Hey, you? Howard, I was at the craft table with Artie Friday night. He was on a major roll. He, he was winning like crazy. He was drunk out of his mind, but he was winning like crazy. Yeah. Right. He was screaming, give me a hot eight, hot eight, the whole night, screaming like a mental But pig. he wasn't even betting the hard eight. Yeah. Even though oh, he didn't he, have a hard eight, I just kept yelling out, give me a hard eight. <laughs> he, he, he didn't knows even that know. Means something. He, he didn't even bet the hard eight. Why do you need a hard eight? You want the... <laughs> it just seemed appropriate. Yeah, he just wanted to yell. It was great. What happens when you put money on the pass line? That you, like, if you just bet, if you just roll a seven or eleven? Well, yeah, no, you, you, you're betting with the roller. So if you win the, the the roll, you win money. But you know, you bet the odds too. Yeah, there was a guy that rolled for like a half hour. Already was just winning off of. Oh, so you bet numbers? No, no, no. You know, you know how it, when you bet the pass line, then you back it up with the odds. Yeah. That's what I was doing. Oh, so you took one number? Yeah. So I won. I won I, I won a good amount of money. That was that's what put me up for the whole weekend. That first, All right, okay. That first he would have won a fortune, in other words. Right, he, he had a fortune. He lost most of it back. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to understand. Yeah. I'm trying to understand what he did because to bet one number is insanity. Uh. I think if the guy's rolling along. All right, all right. So you did that and you went to bed at 9 a.m. Right. What time is your show? <laughs> the show that night was at 10 o'clock. So what time did you wake up? So I went to bed at 9 a.m. And I got up around noon. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh, you're crazy. Because he's in Vegas. Yeah, he, was... he knows those tables are right downstairs. I... <laughs> and they're giving away money at those tables. Exactly. I was Howard. I've been literally. I've been in the same outfit the entire. Oh. Uh... Really? That's hard to believe. <laughs> believe it or not. <laughs> believe it or not, I've been, I've been in the same jeans for the whole weekend. <laughs> <laughs> So you I pack a bag. So so okay. So then you do a show Saturday night. Saturday night. What'd you do from show, noon? What'd you do from noon to the show? Uh, 
I well, I, I ate and gambled and drank. <laughs> of course. <laughs> well, Donated to the community. You were drinking at noon. Yeah. <laughs> well, I went down. Well, at noon I woke up and I just like threw my pants back on and my and, and, and a shirt that was laying on my rug. Do you even I, shower? No, no, not not oh. Saturday. Why do that? Why wash off the luck? Oh. <laughs> and I had chips and like you know, so I went back down to the. I, I, I there's a Starbucks here and I got like a caramel macchiata. Those are great, huh? That's like yeah. l lunch. I chugged the caramel macchiata down and then I went to the craft table. The macchiata is like a whole big deal. That's like that's like liquid candy. It's like a, a milkshake with coffee, I guess. It's good though. It's good. At least Artie was a drinking alcohol. <laughs> They don't spike the macchiata. It's good to see you doing something healthy and having a caramel macchiata. Yeah, the caramel macchiata really helped me out. That well, he happy. needed the calories. Yeah, no yeah, empty calories. Yeah, he needed calories because he could hardly sustain himself. <laughs> <laughs> what a, your body must hate you. <laughs> it's full of Jack Daniels and caramel macchiatas. If the e-chimer e could have a shot of me right now, uh, I look homeless. I'm sure. You're kidding. I, I'm in the I, same outfit I've had on for three days. And you're gonna go take those big meetings in L.A. like that? I have. I have a 7 a.m. flight to L.A. Well, wait a I second. Have, oh, I see. It's three hours earlier. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I have an entire day of business in Los Angeles. I have an audition. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Howard what are you supposed to play a derelict? I hope. <laughs> Howard already landed in Vegas at like seven. Hey, wait a second. I saw him at. 10, maybe 10.30, <laughs> and he was trashed. Just trashed. <laughs> yeah, hey, Artie. Yeah. So the audition. Yeah. Like, do you have to know your lines and stuff? Yeah, I got... They sent me the script, and, you know, the screwed up thing is it's in front of Mike Judge for this movie I would I would kill to get. It's such a funny movie. I know. You tell me the premise. It's funny. Yeah, it really is great, and I would love to work with Mike Judge, but I haven't even looked at the long... I mean, I might embarrass myself. Yeah, you know, you'd love to work in that movie, except that it was right at Super Bowl Sunday, and you were going to Vegas. Yeah, I don't... Howard, I haven't looked at... Uh, guys, I haven't looked at a word on the page. Look, if it's anything like he writes for Beavis and Butthead, you probably got three, you know, like, yeah. uh, like three lines. It is, actually. I play, like, a dumb guy. That's the character, so... I I think you're ready. Yeah, yeah. If you want rehearse now, because I'll help you. I'll run lines with you. Couldn't he rehearse on the plane? What did he do on the plane ride over? Oh, he gets he still has time. He hasn't taken the plane yet. No, I'm talking about when he goes when he was going to Vegas. Yeah, he's drinking and relaxing. Uh, I did. You know, I had a first class ticket uh, out here, and I had a I I got to confess, I had a couple of Jack and Waters on the plane. Uh, <laughs> he was loaded already. Yeah. Yeah, it was our Vegas weekend. This was real. But you know what? It is. It's very irresponsible of me because this is like I have a huge day in Los Angeles. <laughs> Did you, have you been to sleep since the Super Bowl? No. Oh. <laughs> so wait a minute. So you got up at noon and started drinking on Saturday. I went back down to the craps table. Dude, why don't you just come home? You know, you know, you're, you're crazy. You're going to you, that. Did you go to the rock spot at all for anything? Um, oh, that's the other thing. That's the, I, I took a steam with Dennis Rodman. Yeah. Did you see his schlong? Who, who uh, I'm telling you, it's not that impressive. Oh, really? really? Whoa. <laughs> hey, that's what? big news. Hey, now. That's an exclusive. What happened? You walked in the um, the steam room? I go downstairs. <clears throat> this was this was today. This is fast forward in a little bit. I, I had to sweat the booze out before <laughs> I watched the Super Bowl. Right. The last couple of days, so... I, I remember when we were here before, the Hard Rock has this amazing spa. Right. They have a great steam room. So I said, I'll go to sweat the booze out in the steam room. I go down there. See, the Hard Rock's all set up for degenerates. Yeah. <laughs> they know what they need. I go down there, and um, I go in the steam room, and I'm sitting there by myself, and Rodman walks in, fuck naked. Of course. And just sits down. He doesn't even put a towel down, you know. He just oh. sits right down. With his ass. Ass yeah, on the tile? On the same <laughs> thing. Ass, ass. Yeah, it's, it's, just, it's, just, <laughs> it's just Detroit Pistons ass all over. Right. <laughs> and uh, there's so much steam in the room that we're sitting two feet from each other. And, I mean, he's been on the show a couple of times, but he had no idea who I was. Right. And I didn't want to bug him. So I'm just sitting there trying to put my my head up and and not look, but of course it's Dennis Rodman. You're you're curious, right? You just want, you want to see what Carmen Electra was getting, right? And <laughs> it wasn't McDonald's that big. Was so, it so listen, so it was I, just I, you I, and him. 
I take a quick uh, glance down, and it's, you know what? It's not that impressive. <laughs> Good. I right. mean, Artie, I mean, compared to you. Compared to me, it's impressive. Oh. He has more than you. Yeah, he's got more. At the, that's the exclusive. Dennis Rodman has a bigger penis than me. Well, would you say it was like... I'd say, uh, you know, again, I, I did it real quick. Real quick. But I'd say flaccid, you're looking at maybe, you know, three, four inches. Ooh, you well, hey. But that's pretty good. I mean, what do you, what do you expect? Well, you expect him to be a shower. Uh, you, uh, you know what? Uh, this may be racial profiling, but I expected a, like a, like a, a, a like a baseball bat. Yeah, exactly. Now, the did you? Rock. The next time you got to bring a ruler with you, so we know the exact inches. You should have got. Excuse me, Mr. Robin. I have to measure you for the show. I. Th it was like a quick glance, you know. Yeah. Wow. And then he was doing like exercises in the steam room, and feel like I was wearing like I I I, I had my jeans on in the steam room. Oh. <laughs> what? The same jeans you're wearing now? I just no, wait, no, whoa, no, whoa, 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 whoa! You had your jeans on. I, I was I was so messed up that I just I just you know, kind of wandered down there and went into the went into the and they all dude. Did you take off your show, shoes? Everybody at the Hard Rock is incredibly nice to me because they know I'm with you. But why don't you just put on a robe? They give you robes to wear. Because I, I just didn't feel like it. Did you have a shirt on? Was your shirt on? And I had a shirt on. Oh. Did you take off your shoes and socks? Wait a second, Artie. Yeah. You're telling me you wore your pants and yeah. your shirt in the steam room? I wore I wore Lee jeans. What did Rodman think when he was sitting there and you're in your pants and he your shirt? He, he, he barely knew I was there. Dude, there's <laughs> no way that that looks normal. But I mean, did he? You took off your shoes and your socks. No, yeah, I had, I had, uh, no, I had socks on. <laughs> oh, could you imagine? That? So were you just like really drunk and you just walked into? The I was table? still, I was still loaded. <laughs> you weren't that drunk because you were probably self-conscious about your body. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, yeah, no, I, I look gross, you know, and I don't want to, like, you know, I, I, yeah, I get depressed when I see myself uh, <laughs> put on a shirt on. Oh. How long did you stay in the steam room with your clothes on? I just wanted to sweat. That's all I wanted to do. <laughs> How, but, but then when you got out, you were soaking wet. You must have been freezing. Yeah, I, when I got out, I w then I walked through the uh, <laughs> then I walked back through the casino, you know, with sweaty clothes. It looked like I just got hit with a hose or something. <laughs> <laughs> Holy mackerel! What a mess you what are. A this was the Vegas weekend to end all Vegas weekends. Our most important Artie's having fun. Most important. <laughs> So, so you, uh, all right, so then so, Super Bowl, tell me the bets. So, uh, for the Super Bowl, I had the coin toss, I won 500 on. Go ahead. The over, I won four grand on. All right, but wait a second, were you freaking out up at, at halftime, the score was like ridiculously low. Well, I was watching it with Sam, and we were into the second quarter, and he goes, he goes, Artie Lang bet the over, and it's nothing, nothing. Yeah. <laughs> I mean... It's unbelievable. Yeah, there was no scoring first quarter at all. Were you nervous at that point? Oh, my God. I, I, I wrote it off. I said, there's no way uh, it's impossible to win. And, uh, you know, the Hard Rock got me in the, uh, the, the, the VIP party, and I'm sitting there just screaming and yelling, and people are looking at me like I'm nuts. And uh, there was no scoring, you know. And, no. and uh, then all that scoring happened at the end of the first half, and, I I just <laughs> I, holy drink mackerel. Got to end up a few but did you did you bet the field goal bet? I bet okay. I had uh, I didn't bet the field goal bet no. Okay. Which is a good thing because Vanatari missed two field goals. Right. Yeah, they have to make them all right. Which That's was, right. Which was killing me. Uh, but I bet I this was a great bet. I bet the over on the Patriots total amount of points. And what was that? What was Twenty-two the... and a half. Oh, very nice. nice. I saw that and I was like, they, the, "The Patriots got to go over twenty-two and a half." And that's one of those teams. Hey, I got to hand it to you. Remember, rem I bet that I bet a grand on that. Remember how everyone was saying you don't know football because you're the two best defensive teams in the league, and it's yeah. be, you know, so yeah, don't bet the over. Yeah, so I mean, thirty-eight is an insanely low over/under for a Super Bowl. Everybody mm -hmm. wants to score. You know, at the end, people are. Uh, you know, in junk time, even when people would lay back, they score in the Super Bowl. What else? Uh, so, what else did you bet? Anything else? 
Uh, that was pretty much it. Yeah. That those were the those were the large bets that I made. So then after the Super Bowl, you just stayed up and gambled all night. After the Howard, when 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 that game went over, when the Panthers the Panthers scored a TD, yeah, the party was on. Uh, I I moved the party at halftime up to to my suite up here. I had a bunch of my buddies from Jersey over. And uh, we watched the second half of my suite. We got like chicken wings, and uh, <laughs> I was with uh, uh, Bob Levy and Dan, 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 the song parody man. Yeah, that guy. <laughs> He's a great guy. We we had wings. We had we ordered steaks, roast hmm. beef sandwiches. I was like, everything's on me. When like a Roman over, orgy. We were screaming and yelling. Did they, did they Hard Rock copy all that food? Uh, yeah, everything yeah. was comp. Actually, you know. Uh, the kid who produced the gig I came out here uh, to do, uh, this kid Jeff Beecher, a great guy, he brought Kelly Osborne up to my suite. Really? She was in the hotel. Anybody bang her? Uh, nobody banged her, no. <laughs> well, she what, did she look at you and run out? She could not have been more annoyed. It was me. It, it, <laughs> listen, listen, this is Kelly Osborne. She's used to like going to parties with like the Hilton sisters and like, George Clooney. Right. For the second half of the Super Bowl, she came up to my suite. It was me... Like four of my buddies from Jersey, Levy and Dan the Swing Parry. <laughs> <laughs> How quick did both face that she made? Yeah, I, had, I had ACDC in the CD player live at Donington. Uh, how long did the, how long did she last there? She Howard, she was in my room for three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> she, she came up with a friend of hers. They were both very nice. They were very polite. You know, I, I gave her the, the most comfortable chair in the room. I thought. <laughs> We're eating chicken wings. I got chicken. I'm drunk. I got chicken sauce on my face. <laughs> and uh, the over the over comes in. All my buddies had the over too. I, I convinced them to bet it. We we went nuts. For the dessert. Like, she, and she ran out. She she got she got scared. And like was she all dressed up with like one of those weird hairdos she and was like out makeup? For a party. Yeah. yeah, she's all dressed to the nines. I heard there was in the jeans. He went to the steam room. I heard there was a party in Artie Lang's room. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, she had a look on her face like, "You guys are gross." <laughs> <laughs> you guys a, are grosser than my brother Jack. But that's a Super Bowl party, dude. I mean, you know what did she expect? I mean, you guys actually were interested in watching the Super Bowl. Alex, this is a rich broad grew up in Beverly Hills in London. She was with me and my buddy Anthony watching a game that we have a bet on the over. <laughs> hey Dan, you're on the air. Hey, Howard, how's it going? What's up? Hey, it's Dan. Uh, I lost Artie. I guess you got him on the phone now, but uh, he disappeared a couple hours ago. Oh, you were you're Dan the Song Parody Man? Yeah, that's yes, Dan. sir. Yeah. Hey, Artie, you're on the line still. Well, what do you got to say, Dan? Well, the most amazing thing, aside from the amount of alcohol that Artie and Levy consume collectively, which is just, you, you can't even measure it, you know, by the gallon. But the most amazing thing was that Artie actually turned down one shot of tequila from a fan. Aside from that, he did not turn down one drink the entire weekend. I'm picturing Artie in the steam room with his clothes on with a naked Dennis Rodman and then walking through the the, 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 the Hard Rock yeah. air-conditioned lobby completely, completely wet. Drenched. Howard, I was in the steam room at the Hard Rock in an outfit. I looked like, you know, I was working construction. <laughs> yeah, you look like you were fixing the steam room. And Dwayne, you're on the air. Yeah, what's going on, Howard? <laughs> Listen, Artie was at the blackjack table, right? Mm -hmm. He was getting pissed. He was all sorts of bent up on freaking JD. He was on a good roll and everything. But then all of a sudden, what happened, Artie? Remember when you came through and you spilled them drinks and everything and started losing some money then? What happened? You so, Artie, drinks? thank you, though, because I bet on the over and you yeah. some money. Yo, good looking. Peace. Go, good buddy. looking. Hey, Artie, what happened? You spilled drinks all over the blackjack table? I spilled a drink on the black. <laughs> did, they get, did they get pissed? Yeah. Well, no, hey, no, again, I'm with you, brother. You want to hear something funny? Yeah. I wasn't even there. I just knew he probably would. <laughs> ah, that's oh, too funny. That's funny. <laughs> you predicted I spilled a drink? Yes. I spilled one drink. This was at like 4 a.m. <laughs> uh, it was it was actually a beer because by the end of the night, I just started doing chill shots at J.D. and... Wow. You know, drinking Heineken's to chase it. Oh, oh, my stomach is burning just listening to you. How much sleep have you gotten collectively? Like, would you think more than six hours for the whole weekend? No, I'd say five hours. Wow, you're going to crash, dude. Right in one of those meetings today. 
I, so what are you supposed I, to do? I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm you, just going to have to go listen, you know. So so you didn't even go to bed last night. So what do you got to do? You got to go to these meetings in L.A. at 7 a.m. Yeah. And then an audition. <laughs> Howard, yeah, it's not even a meeting. It's an audition. With Mike Judge. Yeah, with Mike Judge. Now, have you gone to the steam room to uh, steam out some of the booze? I should go. I got my flights in three hours. I should go down there. I got Why didn't you sleep down. last night? Because you just played cards the whole night? Uh... I, uh, yeah, no, after, after the Super Bowl, we went down, we played blackjack, and then we went strip club hopping. Oh. Uh, we were over at Club Paradise. You find your girlfriend? Uh, no, she's not around. <laughs> <laughs> she was repulsed. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking for that whore the same way, uh, OJ's looking for the real killer. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Wow! But uh, we went we we went strip club up and we went uh, club paradise. Uh, and then you just said screw it, let's stay up all night. Yeah, what am I gonna do? Am I, what, 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 you know, I won the over at the night. Super Bowl. What am I gonna get? Them? I don't know, but <laughs> like, like, it, like at some point, don't you go? Wow, I got an audition tomorrow. I think I better get some sleep. Uh, yeah, that's I, this is very irresponsible. Of me. Did you ever think of it already, or did you just not care? I completely forgot. <laughs> you did? I, I forgot about it. Mike, you're on the air. Hey now. Hey now. More than Howard, you don't know the two bastards. Listen, so envious of Artie, bro. He's got a great job, drinks whatever he wants, eats like a freaking Galvone, and still, ha and still has a job with you. Ralph, you're on the air. Let's take the over under when Artie's going to die. <laughs> Three years. Hey, you know, Artie. Artie, you there? Yeah. You know, I love you. You know, you're a great guy and you're fun and everything, but don't you kind of think, like, you said you go to the Hard Rock Hotel, right? And right. they're treating you good because... You know, you're with the show and right. with Howard and everything like that. And then you go out and you, you just kind of make, you know, kind of a fool of yourself. And you're screaming and yelling. This is Ralph saying it. And, and, and you're Ralph, in, like he Ralph. doesn't make a wait, 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 Let me say that. Be very careful what you say. Right? Yeah, you're in the steam room with your clothes on and stuff. Like, don't, does it ever cross your mind? I'm not saying, like, hey, it's a problem. Just, but that's hard. your mind that maybe it reflects bad on Howard. Oh, yeah, look, look, look who's worried about reflecting yeah. poorly on Howard. Yeah, haven't you done enough no, of that? Hey, Ralph, are you, Ralph, are you kidding me? You've got to be, you've got to be joking. You I'm really have to be out of your mind right now. Does uh, it ever occur to you, Ralph? What, what, I haven't done anything like that. Oh. Well, did you, aren't you the guy who passed out on the street when you were supposed to be coming up here because you were tripping? Yeah, yeah, yeah but oh, people, okay. at the, people at the Hard Rock didn't know that. And don't you piss off every business relationship you oh. work with? Didn't you, go, didn't you, haven't you gone on several shoots with me where they said we really don't want Ralph here? Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's not the point. <laughs> <laughs> and Ralph, don't you owe me $105 from bets you put on the last two weeks? No, didn't Will pay you back for Yeah, Will. Right. Howard, Ralph puts bets in with me, right? Yeah. Right. He loses 105 bucks. I see him at the party last weekend. And I go, where's the, dude, where's the 100 bucks? He goes, oh, well, Will uh, uh, owes me you money. You told me to let it ride. ride. You told me to let it ride. What are you talking about? No, no, no. I, I said, I let the, you let the 50 ride. Like, I'm not going to go ask Will, who's got no money, for Ralph's money. Yeah, I love I that. was going to let it ride to the Super Bowl. Ralph, if you, if, Artie, why are you taking bets from him? He, wait, he calls me don't up. Don't get and, involved. Know, Let him first, place his own bets. First, you uh, don't know how how Ralph hunts Artie down so he can place these bets. <laughs> oh. he's, he's hard to find. <laughs> he keeps me on the phone for a half an hour, Howard. Uh, do you think... About different bets, and then he bets $50. <laughs> <laughs> it's about, I'm not going to call a bookie with a $50 bet. He, he just never stop punching me in the face. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mike Judge is on the phone. Hey, Mike. You already, you suck. Yeah. <laughs> you stay home. <laughs> All right, dude. Well, thanks for checking in. Hey, Howard, man. It, it was it was a great weekend. Sounds beautiful. Yeah, it sounds it like weekend. you stayed up to take a part of everything that happened. The whole thing. I tell you what, the show is huge out here, man. I did I did stand up in the same room uh, Bowie did. It was. Uh, How was uh, Bowie stand up? <laughs> yeah, right. It was twelve hundred seats sold out. You know, the, the, the crowd was great. Uh, the, the show went good. Um, you know, we went out afterwards. I won money on the bowl. It was just the whole weekend was just like amazing. It was so out of character of me. So you so up, you're leaving Vegas with money. I'm leaving Vegas up a good amount of money. How much? Eight grand. <laughs> and that includes your salary. Yeah, yeah. No, no. no. <laughs> uh, and then on top of the money I got paid for the stand up. Right. Wow. You didn't lose your money. No, I, I eight hate cheese with the money I'm up from gambling. Wow. Eight grand? Well, trust yeah. me, he'll lose that. Don't worry. <laughs>
<laughs> wow. All right, all right, Artie. Good luck with your auditions. Thanks, Howard. All Later, I bro. have to say is March Madness is on the way. Yeah, I, I got I got some steak money. I'm ready. All right, later, bro. Yeah. Good talking to you, man. Right. Man, oh, man. How is he still alive after a weekend All like I can say is thank goodness he doesn't have any more time there <laughs> because he died. How does he do it? I could never stay up well, that many hours. Well, you can hear his voice is a little shod. You know, you know, I can't imagine what he looks like. For a guy who stayed up an entire week and drinking that much alcohol and eating a horrible food, he's in pretty good shape, and he will go out and audition and be fine. But just imagine what he looks like. He was in a shot in a steam room, fully dressed. <laughs> <laughs> Denise, hi. Hi. What's up? Is, is this Howard? Yeah. Oh, I wanted to just talk about Artie for a second. I told the guy on the phone him it's match me that hasn't I've been up all night in the super room myself. All uh, right. I wanted to come down and see him, but he's not going to be available today. No, he'll be here about Thursday or something. Yeah, hey, you'll Mike. have to get a little sleep before you can see him. Mike, you're on the air. Howard, how you doing? I work at the Hard Rock. I'm in charge of the bathroom facilities. And Artie's sitting there at the urinal bobbing and weaving, totally missing the mark, and doing it all over the floor. The guy's I disgusting. Don't I don't know if I buy that. It could have happened. Yeah. All right, I gotta take a break. We'll be back right after these words. Stop. Let's see what I got here. The hell is the email? I said, let's do the email, and then I don't even have it. Um, got a lot of email about uh, radio host Mike Savage is saying I was scum and responsible for the moral decay and slime of society. I really couldn't care less. I don't even know who he is. I just know he's the guy who got fired for saying that gay, pe gay people are evil or something. Who cares? Like, get over it, dude, you old fart. You know, any guy who's that uptight about homos is probably a homo. And that's the bottom line. Think about it. If somebody, co if somebody goes up to someone and says, hey, man, you're gay. Um... They can react in two ways. One way you could do is like kill the guy for saying it because it freaks you out and it's not true. Right. And the other thing would be like, that's so funny. Now, the guy who says that's so funny is the guy who knows he isn't a homo. Or he's gay. <laughs> or he's gay. Goes one or two ways. The guy who goes, I'm going to kill you, is the guy who has feelings like, oh, my God, maybe it's true. He figured me out. I yeah. Kill him. That's the only thing I can tell you, man. Right. Homo bashers are probably gay. Well, I will, I've never understood that whole idea that if you stand around a bunch of gay people, you'll turn gay. Yeah. I don't think that could happen. The only person that ever happened to was Fred. <laughs> <laughs> it happened to me with those queer eye guys. <laughs> okay, uh, what else does it say here in the email? I don't know. I, I seem to have lost it. Can you believe that? Can you believe I could lose something? Now, that's unheard of. <laughs> That's never happened on the show before. You have such an organized desk over there. Yeah, I tell you, it makes me mental. All right, I've officially lost the email. All right, I talked about Jessica Simpson. I can't believe I lost the email. Let me see if I can find it. Give me one second. All right, I found it. See how simple it was. Yeah, it's easy. <laughs> uh, a lot of people wrote in to say Artie is the best. Why do you make fun of Artie? Who makes fun of Artie? Artie I mean, who makes fun of Artie? <laughs> So what, what they mean. so what if he's fat? He's still funny as hell. He's way better than Jackie. He just doesn't sit there and laugh at everything you say. Artie, you're the best. Keep up the good work. Here's another one. I swear, Artie just gets better and better. Peeing outside of a club and having two cops tap on his shoulder is amazing. I love this guy. <laughs> uh, here's someone who criticizes Artie. He thinks he's gay. Right. I think Artie enjoyed gay anal ring toss a little too much. Hey, I'm going to kill you. I'm not gay. <laughs> he sounded like he was really enjoying it. Not just the thought of feeling of Carmen Electra, but the act of tossing rings at a man's bare ass. Uh, so there you go. I love Here's that. someone who makes a show suggestion. They want a cabbie and mom reunion. <laughs> oh, no. They, they remind me that it's been about one year since I arranged for cabbie to meet his biological mother. That's true. It was in January of last year. And all I know is within one year, cabbie got adopted by his biological mother and then now avoids her phone calls. Yes. Because he can't take the involvement. Because <laughs> she wants to know him too much. She actually wants to have a relationship with him. Mm -hmm. We thought that might work out a little differently. Yeah, so uh, that might be funny, and I'm going to look into it. A lot of people like when we played Howard Dean's speech yesterday and played ACDC music. By the way, I'm uh, 
really enthralled with this uh, new uh, uh, concept of playing the Howard Dean speech and then having women moan, because it does sound very sexual. Not only are we going to New Hampshire, Tom Harkin, we're going to South Carolina and Oklahoma and Arizona and North Dakota and oh. Mexico. We're going to California and Texas. And we're going to South Dakota and Oregon and Washington and Michigan. And then we're going to Washington, D.C. to take back the White House. Oh, my God. We oh my God. will not give up. We will not give up in New Hampshire. We will not give up in South Carolina. We will not give up in Arizona. Or New Mexico. Oklahoma. North Dakota. Delaware. Pennsylvania. Ohio. Michigan. We will not quit now. And we want our country back for ordinary Americans. And we're going to win in Massachusetts. And North Carolina. And Missouri. And New York and Ohio. I made up my mind, making you start. We're going to California. In my car. <laughs> there it is. You do a lot with that speech. Oh, my God. Are you kidding? Dan the song parody, man. Dan the man. Dan the man. Um, and by the way, at my birthday party, I was surprised to learn that my executive producer, Robin Redzinski, has a boyfriend. I thought you would have. I said, did he catch that? Or yeah, not? I saw that going on. A little romance. <laughs> really nice uh, Really nice guy. Nice guy. I didn't get to spend much time with him uh, for my running around, so I, uh, you know, good looking guy. Dashing. Yeah. Not used so, to what do you know about this new romance? I, I don't know anything what's going on. Do you know anything? No. No. I thought you'd get the scoop. You're no. the nosy one. <laughs> no, no. Not in real life. I got the scoop, but I'm too drunk to. I was too drunk to remember. Oh, you. Yeah. What's going on with this guy? I heard he li The only thing I heard was he lives in California. Yeah, he lives in California. His name's Peter. He's a great guy. I met him uh, last summer. He's a retired fireman. Yeah. And um. What's yeah. going on here? Are you getting serious feelings? No, I no no. I well, I I like him a lot, and I know he likes me a lot, but. I don't, you know, he lives in California. How did you meet this guy? I met him surfing. He, um, he's a big surfer, snowboarder, mm. kind of athletic guy. And we have a mutual friend, and a bunch of us all went surfing. And so you saw you in a swimsuit, like the like the whole package, and then took you home and banged you. <laughs> no, actually, you know what? I came on to him. Oh, you did. I seduced him. You did. Yeah. Mm. He um. Sounds hot. He's kind of shy, I guess. Yeah. And um, I saw. How'd you seduce him? What's the move? Well, I saw him over um, Thanksgiving week, and we hung out again for the day and went hiking. And uh, at the end of the day, he said, okay, well, you know, see you around. And as he was driving away, I kind of screamed out his name. Well, you get all romantic. Lee, you get all soft. Look at her. Look all... at her. I like, yeah. what is this person? I'm not, I'm not a... <laughs> yeah, you scream out his name. I'm nervous. So, so I screamed out his name, and he rolled back up, and I said, um, you know, Peter, I have a huge crush on you. Well, look at this. And he Boy. said, you do? You guys are dumb. And uh, he said, you do? Yeah, I never know if someone likes me. <laughs> That's never happened. Someone's got to really spell it out. Or you're stuttering John, you think everybody likes me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think everyone hates me. 
so uh, he was shocked. And I said, I do, from the first time I met you that time we went surfing. And he said, well, what do you want to do about that? And I told him I wanted to go back with him to his house. Wow. Whoa. Wait, wait, this is like penthouse letters. I didn't think crap like this ever happened. I'll tell you what I want to do about it. Anal, okay? I want to take you to my house in Arizona and Montana <laughs> and Michigan and California and New Jersey. Fire. <laughs> Fire. Yeah. Are you ready for some hiking, Reggie? What is it, Daddy B? Yeah, I'm a cheat now. All I know is this dude was rubbing her ass during the party. Oh, was he? Oh yeah, that was my ass. I was gonna go like, <laughs> that was your ass. That was my ass. <laughs> he was rubbing your ass during the party. He's very sweet and very affectionate. Yeah, huh? He's a great guy. You like that kind of thing, huh? Yeah, I do like that. When a guy rubs your ass. Yeah, I like when he rubs me all over. Man. He was taking liberties. I was I like, had how long? No idea was what like, was going on. I never met this guy. He's already rubbing her ass. But yeah. when I was doing the, the rotations of the, the seating, I was like, I gotta put Robin and its new boyfriend at Howard's table so he can get the scoop. Yeah. Uh, he's not my boyfriend, but he's a really great guy who I like very much. Right. God, those rotations confused the hell out of me by the end of the night. <laughs> yeah. So uh, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna move him to New York or what? No, he's very California. Yeah. And uh, I'll just see him when I go to L.A. That's all. Bang I'll, him out there. Yeah, I'll don't see him. Don't get crazy. I'll see him soon. Yeah. What, are you getting nervous? Yeah, don't go giving up your job he for some dude. He gets nervous no. when he sees a girl getting yeah. attached. Yeah. yeah, do me a favor. <laughs> don't worry about that. I'm not I can tell you 20 things wrong with the guy, okay, in case you start having feelings, real deep feelings. No, I'm not quitting to have kids. Good. You're very funny. You remember the first time I had one date with Mr. X. And I was telling Howard I had a great time. He said, Robin, there's no provisions in your contract for you getting pregnant. I was like, what? That's right. What day? I laid it right out. <laughs> yep. Can't you bang someone in New York? You know what? I'm getting closer. I meet guys in Greece. I meet them in good. Turkey. Now it's California. Maybe um maybe It's in New the York country. <laughs> yeah, bang someone in New York. That's a good there's plenty of guys. There's 80 million guys in New York. Bang one of them. Let them rub your ass. <laughs> All right. When you go out to California, that guy can rub your ass. Yes, line them up. Have line one in up. every state, like Dean says. Mm. So then you went back to his house and you did it? Oh, my God, we had the best night. Really? It was so excellent. It was one of the most... <laughs> romantic? One of the most... You know what? I think romance is overrated. Sometimes you just want to have a great time. And, uh, and you know, just... What is the best be night? wildly sexual. It wasn't wild... It was wildly sexual, totally just animal. Yeah, she's not. She says it wasn't like lit candlelight and yeah. Would he just throw you up on a sink and bang you? All over, it just just all over the house. It was just it was like just mad, passionate. Did you yeah. shave each other? No, we didn't no. have to. Uh, no, it was, was mad. all action, Howard. There were no down. There was no downtime. <laughs> Did you spank him? No, I don't remember spanking him. It was just like kind of just animal sex. It was just sex. Yeah, that guy looks like he has a big hose. Uh, He's very manly. <laughs> He's very manly. Yeah, I'd be afraid of that hose. Big guy. I don't Fire know if I can handle it. <laughs> oh, Firemen. Firemen have big hoses. Yes. <laughs> you didn't call me the N-word, did you? <laughs> that wouldn't have been appropriate. That wasn't you and, and Peter. But, yeah, he didn't ask. Man. <laughs> You know, no, it would really seriously. be funny if two white people were doing that. <laughs> I've, I've, oh, I've tried. Done that. Yeah. <laughs> and this guy went along with it. It was great. <laughs> I, I do it with the word wah. <laughs> so, wow, the best sex you ever had? You know what? It was it was a top ten night for sure. Really? Wow, fireman, put out my fire! <laughs> <laughs> Who knew? Yeah. But you know what was the greatest part was that I... You know, like, we, he was just going to drive away. And hmm. the fact that I kind of yelled out his name and this whole really magical Romantic. night happened. Yeah. He yeah, took you back and banged you crazy. Yeah. And then he came to New York and spent a week in New York, and we had a blast here. It's you getting, yeah. getting laid. Yeah. How many times did he do you that day? Like three? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what? Yeah. That, that is... <laughs> 
That, uh, that's accurate? That sounds accurate. Yeah. That, it, yeah. That's, not, that's not how many times I... Orgasm. Orgasm, but that's... How many times did you orgasm? More than that. More than three. But it was three sessions. You can... Wow. <laughs> You're Robin getting dizzy. Robin's a little jealous. I know. Yeah, I've had those times, my dear. <laughs> yeah, when? What are you talking about? I, what are you talking about? When did it happen? When did it happen? Mr. How many X? How times have I told you about the guy in the Caribbean? Yeah, but that was, that was 100 years ago. I'm still telling you that these things become memories that you keep forever. <laughs> hey, you girls do double team me. I guarantee a couple of orgasms. <laughs> Wow. See, I've never been in the room when a woman's had an orgasm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty wild from what I hear. Yeah. Well, you've never been in the room when somebody else is having sex? <laughs> oh, Robin, that's crazy. Yeah, they call that new poon. Let's see that guy deliver that kind of night in three years. <laughs> that's all I'm going to tell you. I'll keep my fingers crossed. Yeah. Well, maybe she'll have it with a different guy. Mr. Big Shot. <laughs> Keeping her options. <laughs> Mr. Surfer. Yeah, if I had all day to surf, I could maybe give someone an orgasm. Uh, sorry, I don't surf. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I don't surf. <laughs> sorry, I don't hike. Sorry, I'm uncoordinated. <laughs> sorry, I look like a spaz on skis. <laughs> wow. But... Yeah, he's a he's a very good, nice guy, and I hope this doesn't embarrass him too much. <laughs> oh please! What guy wants to hear? Yeah. What guy doesn't guy want to hear? Hates it when this is on sad. radio. That he's great in bed, <laughs> and it was an incredible night. What else made it romantic? Just the sex, or like in between, he was telling you stuff. He was just he was very affectionate, yeah. and um, he's just a super great nice guy. Affectionate but rough too at the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah she was saying it wasn't so much about romance. That's what she said. It yeah. was like wild. Heavy duty, intense. Give it to you hard, huh? <laughs> yeah, Robin, we won't yeah. embarrass him by telling a story about how he gave you multiple <laughs> orgasms. Yeah. So I like talking to chicks about this stuff. You learn stuff. Yeah. They have to give it to you hard, but also be kind of sensitive at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> not even so much the sensitive yeah, He part. doesn't get it. So he's, he's, the, he's never done this. I haven't. Uh, I'm, I'm not able to he's do this. He's Mr. Romance. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I romance you. Give it to you hard, then like sleep with you in a headlock, snore in your ear. You know what yeah. I mean? He's just like a man. Really? Oh, that ain't going to happen. guy. Oh, I don't know how to do that. For me to please a chicken, you think takes like a whole bottle of wine. Yeah, sleep with you in a headlock. <laughs> well, you know what I mean? Just like, just like you're all draped there. all over each other. No, that's um, a little too much for me. <laughs> I don't want to get all sweated on. I can belch on you. Uh, you can fart. I can fart and belch in my sleep. Put the covers over You want head. a man, I can do that. Yeah, I'm sure that'll come in time. Yeah. Oh, look at you. You're walking around like light as feathers. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, I was surprised that you not mentioning that first thing Monday morning. Well, I want to have some class. <laughs> Wait a week. Thanks. <laughs> oh. No, I caught the guy rubbing her ass. I saw that. Yeah, I didn't I like didn't that. Catch that. That I thought was a little inappropriate. <laughs> I remember At a Howard Stern birthday party. <laughs> I remember trying to eat the guy's duck. I apologize for that. <laughs> yeah. While he was grabbing your ass, already ate his plate. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you're a nice guy. Can I have your risotto? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Robin says you're nice. <laughs> Yeah, that was a little embarrassing. I felt a little... Um, what, when Artie ate the dinner? Yeah. Oh, when he was when grabbing your ass? Stuck. Yeah, you know, when he was being affectionate in front of, like, you know, Will and J.D. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, no, no. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who Robin is. <laughs> hey, listen, you know. Let me get used to it. Yeah, let me get used to it. Right. Not good for you. I'm happy for you. Yeah, it was a great time. Thank you. Nothing better than seeing somebody happy and getting their ass rubbed. <laughs> yeah, that is nice. Good times. <laughs> it, was a, it was a great party in a lot of ways. Casey, hey, come there? here and rub my ass a little bit. Hey, Casey, boss. yell Casey's name. Come back. Yes, you know, boss. You know, uh, Howard has a crush on you. Hey, Casey, I have a crush on you. Come back here. <laughs> but what, do you, what do you want to do about it? What do you want to do about it? <laughs> You know what's great about the party was that guy that we never met before was there, and Scott the engineer wasn't. <laughs> right. <laughs> hey, Mike, you're on the air. Let's take a couple of phone calls. Hey, good morning. Good morning, uh, my friend. Long-time listener, and I know the show is not about promoting hate speech, but something was said yesterday that you guys let pass that I think qualifies as pure hate speech. Okay. What was that? Art, at about 10 of 7 yesterday morning, you guys were uh, talking about some football bets. And just right under the radar, 
Wang over there comes up with referring to Martin Luther King Day as National uh, uh, N-Word Day. Oh, and I heard that, but it was in re reference to a call that yeah. was made. Sure. Yeah. No, it wasn't. Yeah. No, no, it, it wasn't. talked about his weekend. And I'm sorry, that we were, qualifies as... Weren't we talking about people who have problems with the fact that it's Martin Luther King Day? There's a guy nope. who called in nope. and said, you took off nigger day. Yes, and uh, Artie you, was... Artie was... Uh, sir... Artie was referencing the. Uh, let's. Say, I know it was here, and if Artie was saying that kind of stuff, I wouldn't have him on the show. No, it was out of context entirely. Uh, you context have it out of context because you didn't hear the call. Didn't hear the call. I did. I was listening to it. It was a joke. Then, if you heard the call, then how could you not know we were referring to that? I, because it was. You were talking about football best specifically, and he just flies in under the radar. He's so one dimensional no, no, anyway. No, no, no. That's not the case. And in fact, I did a whole rant yesterday about. I know so many guys who are like uptight that it's Martin Luther King Day. They don't even understand why Martin Luther King was great and why no, he deserves it. No, we mentioned that in that discussion. That was later. Well, I'm I'm, I'm humbly disagreeing with you, but you can disagree with me. If you choose well, to see it that way, that's your problem. It's just all right. Okay, we heard it. It's enough. How many times are you going to repeat the same stupid ass story? I cleaned it up. I was nice enough to say N word. N -word. That's right. The caller said the whole thing. Artie, that was very nice of you to say the N word. Yes, thank you. <laughs> thank we you. We appreciate it. <laughs> what a good guy. <laughs> Martin Luther King, uh, lest anyone forget, because people say to me, well, he shouldn't have a day. He's not a president. He's, he did just give him a holiday because he's black, and the blacks need a holiday. Well, maybe black people do need a holiday in this country. But uh, I, I believe, certainly, that Martin Luther King was one of the greatest men that ever lived. And I'm not kidding when I say that. If you ever read some of the things that this guy came out with, they were incredibly profound. You know, he, I, mean, he said, I could quote stuff that he has said that to me blows my mind, but it's long and, you know, you got to kind of really sit and think. Uh, I'm trying to think about my favorite Martin Luther King quote, and I would have to say, hmm, it's, it's a tough one to pull one out, but, but you got to read some of his speeches. And the guy was a genius and was able to look at his enemies as friends, which was really weird. I mean, like Gandhi-like. Well, he created a revolution in this country, and he was the only one that got shot. Yeah. Nonviolence means avoiding not only external physical violence, but also internal violence of spirit. You not only refuse to shoot a man, but you refuse to hate him. That's pretty heavy stuff. Um, and it turns out he was the only one who could do it. <laughs> Him and Gandhi. And he was an amazing man. I said to my children, I'm going to work and do everything that I can so that you get a good education. I don't want ever for you to forget that there are millions of God's children who will not and cannot get a good education. And I don't want you feeling that you're better than they are. For you will never be what you ought to be until they are what they ought to be. I mean, that guy was... Off the chart smart. And it's too bad somebody shot him. It was more than off the chart smart, because a lot of smart people just don't care. He it cared. Off the chart he actually scary. cared. He actually cared. And I'll tell you what, the guy who shot him was a complete mutant who didn't have a thought in his head or a care for anybody. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's so unfair. I remember thinking how unfair it was that the guy was dead. And the fact that he's a black guy, well, people have problems with that. They can't accept that a black guy could actually have feelings and be smart, but he is. And uh, you better goddamn believe we should have a Martin Luther King Day. Yeah, this country could have been torn apart, and it wasn't because of him. Yeah. That's what people don't think about. They are thinking, oh, the blacks need a holiday. No, you should be celebrating because your life wasn't destroyed by a civil war, civil unrest. Now listen to this. One last quote. Think about it. If you succumb to the temptation of using violence in this struggle, unborn generations will be the recipients of a long and desolate night of bitterness, and your chief legacy to the future will be an endless reign of meaningless chaos. Martin Luther King, Jr., Justice Without Violence. That dude knew what he was talking about. The more you hate, the more you pass it on to your children, they'll never get out of the endless loop of hate. But also, we become a Kosovo or a Yugoslavia or a Lebanon where there's just nobody talking to anybody, armed camps all over the place, and just waiting for the police to turn around so you can kill each other. Martin Luther King was um, one of the greatest men this country ever produced. So he should have a day. 
And F you if you don't think he should. And that's the end of that. And I know what I'm talking about, too. For a change. For a change. You must have thought this through. I, I thought it through, okay? <laughs>